Hi, I'm Dan, and I'm one of ViewSonic's professional development trainers. Welcome to your new view board. You either have a 52 series version, which is what I have here with me, or you have a 50 series version, which looks like this. And really both of them are exactly the same. The only difference is the physical appearance. Uh, the buttons are on the bottom right corner. You also have some USB ports in the front. Now that blue button, which you can see right here on my board is the power button. So blue means on, and you can obviously tell that my view board is on. If that button is red, means it's turned off. Now, when the view board is turned on, this is what it looks like. This is what we call the view board OS. It allows us to use the board by itself. However, uh, one of the way, easiest ways to use the view board is just to connect your laptop. And the reason is, is your laptop already has all your content on it. So you connect it with the USB cable and the HDMI, and you have a fully interactive device that you can pull up cool websites like FET or open your Google Slides or whatever your content is and immediately start using it. That being said, we're going to explore how to use the view board by itself. Now you're gonna see that we have some apps here on our home screen. This is actually called the shelf. Uh, you can rearrange these. So for example, uh, my view board display is one of our casting solutions. Uh, really it's meant for guests. So like if you have a guest uh, at your site and they need to be on the guest network or they're using a hotspot or something, uh, they can cast with this software. We're gonna go ahead and remove this by doing a two second touch and hold. And you'll notice that allows me to drag the icon and I can just drag it down here to the trash can and that's gonna get rid of it. We can also get rid of this folders icon and that's gonna remove it. Now, one of the ways we can use the view board other than plugging in our laptop is through casting and we use the VCast receiver app to do that. To get to the VCast receiver app, what I'm gonna need to do is touch this down arrow that opens up my shelf and now I can use one finger to scroll down and you'll see the VCast receiver app is down here at the bottom. Now, if I wanna add it up to my shelf, just a two second touch and hold, and then I can drag it up and put it up here. Now make sure your view board is connected to the internet. You can see I have Wi-Fi bars down here, so I can literally click on that. That will then take me to my wireless networks where I can choose the network I wanna to connect to. Anytime you wanna get back to the home screen, just find that home or that house button on the front of your panel, press that, and it's gonna take you back to the view board OS. One of the most important apps in the Viewboard OS is the My Viewboard software. It's because we can bring all of our content and teach instructionally in one place. We don't need multiple apps to do everything that My Viewboard can do. Let's explore it and see what I'm talking about. So let's touch My Viewboard. It's gonna open up. This is what it looks like when it opens up. There's a sign in window. Uh, this is important because this is what allows us to sign in and connect to our cloud storage. But let's come back to this window in just a second. This white area is called your canvas. If you touch, it's gonna to write. And the board is multi-touch, so you can have multiple people writing at the same time. Now the default tool that's active is called the pen tool. And the pen tool is down here in the main toolbar. You can see it right here. Now above the pen tool, you'll see three dots. These are just like quick color changers. You can switch between red and blue and black. But if you wanna get into more detailed pen settings, just touch the pen icon again and you'll see it opens up a menu where I can choose different colors. I have a slider to adjust the thickness. And then I have other kinds of writing tools like a highlighter. So if I choose blue, now you'll notice that my pen is blue. If I wanna erase, right next to the pen is the eraser. When I select the eraser, you'll notice it turns off my pen. Now when I touch, it's gonna erase instead of write. And if I touch it again, it's gonna open up the eraser menu. The big trash can will wipe out everything. The little trash can just gets rid of any of your annotations. And the snowman looking one actually lets you drag around and select and it will delete everything that you circle. Now the board, as I mentioned, is multi-touch. It allows you to write multiple people at the same time. However, it also can detect the size of objects. So let me give you an example. If you're writing, and you wanna erase, you actually don't have to switch to the eraser. All you need to do is make a flat palm like this and it's automatically going to activate the eraser tool. That's because it detects the size of the object that's interacting with it. Same thing with the styluses that come with the panel. You'll notice that the stylus has a pointy side and a thick side. 
Notice that my pen is blue. So touch is blue pen. The thick side of the stylus is blue pen, but the pointy side is thin red pen. And you might be confused, like, wait, it's not doing what I want it to, but this is actually intentional. The board can detect the size of that pointy side. And so what it allows me to do is if I wanna change the color of the pointy side, remember, touch the pen with the pointy side to open up the pen menu. Notice it says fine tip. I can now increase the thickness. Let's make it green. So now touch is blue, thick side's blue, but pointy side is green. So I can really get two tools out of the stylus just by spinning it around. But I wanted to make sure you know that. So when you pull out the stylus and you go to write with it, just know that the pointy side will always override whatever your active tool is um, and it will always be pen. And then to adjust that, just select the pen icon with the pointy side. Don't forget your stylus magnetizes to the front of the panel. Now that you have the basics down, let's learn how to connect our cloud storage and bring in content. In order to do that, we need to get back to that sign-in window. So let's start by making a new page using the new page button. Looks like a piece of paper and a plus icon. Now I'm on page two, and I want you to pay attention. Down here in the bottom right corner, it's a little hard to see, but there's this person icon. This is actually the sign-in window, and when we select it, you'll see that it opens up the sign-in window behind me. Now you'll notice that there's a spot for email password, but we actually don't use email password. We're either gonna use our Apple ID, our Microsoft 365 account, or our Google Workspace account. If you don't have an account, you can click the sign up button or just head over to myviewboard.com and sign up for a free account. Now I'm gonna use another method or another way to sign in and that's with the QR code. So we actually make an app called the My Viewboard Companion app. You can download this on your phone or your tablet or whatever you'd like to do. And what it does is it actually stores your credentials on your phone. And so what I can do here is I can open up the companion app. It saves my Google account. All I have to do is touch this QR code button and then scan this QR code. And then it's going to sign me in to the whiteboard software. And the way that I know I'm signed in is in the top left corner, you can see either your name or your email. And what's cool about this is that the board, before I signed in, didn't know who I was. Now that I've signed in, it has access to all my cloud storage, right? So I can bring in my content, teach and save and share it. So we're gonna go here to the magic box. The magic box is your import tool. So if I touch the magic box, it's gonna open up this window you'll see that my Google Drive and my OneDrive now show up in the account. So if I select my Google Drive, I can now one, two tap into my drive. So remember that two taps. We'll go to my lesson folder and let's open up a document. Now you'll see that the magic box recognizes different file types from my Google Drive. For example, PDFs, there's a Google slide, there's a Google Doc. Any of these documents I can open up into the Whiteboard software. So it's almost acting like the Google Drive app, but it's all inside the Whiteboard software. So let's open up this PDF. Two taps, one, two. It's going to download it. I'm gonna select pages one and two from this PDF to import. And then I'm just gonna choose the import button on the bottom right corner. You'll see here it brought in page one. I'll use my arrows in the bottom left corner to navigate to page two. And there you can see page two. Now this document came in portrait mode. And so I wanna be able to zoom in so it's a little easier to see. In order to do that, I need to use a new tool called Infinite Canvas. Infinite Canvas looks like a hand. When I select it, I can now use that zooming motion, so two fingers going away from each other, to zoom in on the canvas. One finger allows you to scroll or move it. So now I can go back to my pen tool, or maybe we open up the pen menu. We can select a highlighter instead, and we can highlight these action verbs. Listens, hits, grunts, leaks. If we wanna go down, go back to the hand, use one finger to push it up, or two fingers pinch in to zoom it back out. 
And as you notice, everything sticks or everything stays, right? That's one of the annoying things a lot of times about using some sort of interactive panel is none of your annotations stay where they're supposed to. But if we import the content through the magic box into the whiteboard, it's gonna stay. Now, if you ever get lost, go ahead and just touch the hand again. That'll give you a preview and you can get back to where you were before. And again, you'll notice if I go forward a page, backwards a page, all my annotations stay. Now, sometimes we just quickly need like line paper or graph paper or something like that. So we do have built-in backgrounds for you to access as well. The way we import backgrounds is actually by going to the bottom left corner, you're gonna see some mountains. And if I select those mountains, I can change my colors or I can go over, it's four icons over. This icon's yellow, blue, and red. This is called the original content backgrounds. And when I select these, what it's gonna allow me to do is uh, pick a category. So maybe geography or sports. Uh, we're gonna go into the grids section because we're gonna go look for some graph paper. So I just use one finger and I'm gonna scroll through here. There's the grids, I'm gonna select it. And then we're just gonna keep scrolling down past calendars. And you're gonna see there's graph paper here. I can select this one. It's gonna ask you if you want full HD or 4K. Honestly, full HD is plenty big. And then it's going to download that file. I can apply that background to every page in my presentation or just one page. And now I have graph paper. So after signing in, I can use the magic box to bring in my pre-built content from my cloud storage or I can use some of the pre-built content in the original content backgrounds. Let's go ahead and make a new page and talk about how we bring in non-digital content. Maybe you have a document camera. So we have the document camera plugged into the view board. You can plug it into the side USB ports or the front USB ports. Normally we recommend the front USB ports. Again, go to the magic box, Next to the cloud storage, you're gonna see this red lamp icon. This is the document camera icon. And when I select it, you'll see here that it turned on my document camera. So I can either teach with it live, right? And everything's here. Or I can use the pen tool inside the document camera. This is going to allow me to annotate over the top of it using the whiteboard software. Now, a lot of times I wanna bring this into my whiteboard because I wanna make it a part of my notes. So I can use this icon, it looks like a camera lens, touch that. What it's gonna do is it's actually gonna take a screen capture and it's gonna put it in the whiteboard software. So now this becomes part of my notes or I could then write on top of this in addition to any annotations I had already made on it. Now the third type of content that most people try to bring in is web-based and so they want a web page. A lot of people wanna do split screen. I want one web page on one side and then I want my whiteboard on the other side. Uh, at ViewSonic, we do it a little bit differently with our My Viewboard software. We actually put the browser directly in our software. This is called the embedded browser. So when we open this, we can then go to a website like FET or Desmos. Uh, we're gonna go to Desmos because it's a graphing calculator. So if I was teaching slope intercept, I don't need to split screen to Desmos. I'm just gonna do it directly here. So we'll go to my bookmarks. I'm gonna choose the Desmos icon. Uh, I can move my embedded browser out of the way so I can use this uh, bar at the bottom to push it over here on the side. And then we can use the triangle in the bottom right corner to resize it. So what I could do is I could ask kids, you know, predict what you think the slope of y equals two x minus six is. And then they can make their predictions then we can come over here and actually interact directly with the website. So we can type in y equals two x minus six. It gives us the slope. We can hide our keyboard, hide the function page. Now we have this, this is all touch and interactive. But what I love about my view board is the ability to, there's that camera lens icon again. If I touch that, it'll take a screen capture of whatever's in the embedded browser and put it on the canvas. So if I come here, You'll see I have my screenshot. I can bring it over. We can use two fingers to zoom it in and make it bigger and it becomes part of our notes. So what we've done is we've logged into my view board. 
we were able to import from the magic box. We were able to bring in backgrounds. We opened up content with our document camera and we used a web browser all inside one piece of software. We don't need multiple apps and tools. We do it all in one place. So you might be asking, well, that's great, Dan. We've added a PDF, we've added backgrounds, we've added images and document camera. How do we save it or how do we share it? In order to do that, we need to use our file management tool. So it's actually this folder right here. And when I select it, you're gonna see that there are two floppy disks. Floppy disks, if you don't know, are the save icon. So if I select the floppy disk, it's gonna let me choose where to save. Now, uh, we are big on security and we are big on flexibility. We love everything to be on the cloud because it allows you to move around. You don't have to be stuck to the board. So we don't wanna save it to the board itself. We wanna save it back to our cloud storage. So I can select my Google Drive here, go into my drive, and then I can save this file. Let's just call it lesson. touch the check mark, and what it's gonna do is it's going to save it into my drive, and the way I know is at the top it'll say lesson, and then you'll see the Google Drive icon. Uh, that's going to allow me to close out, sign out, walk away, and I could go to any other board and then open up uh, this file because it's now saved in my Google Drive. Now, what if I wanted to share it with kids? What if I wanted to give them the notes, right? I write up here, homework is, pages 110 through 112. Go to the folder, not saving it, go to the QR code. This is called the QR share. The purpose of the QR share is to take your whiteboard presentation and upload it to your default cloud storage. So in my case, that's Google Drive. What it's currently doing, this processing, is it's converting the file into a PDF. We do PDF because that's a nice universal format that kids can open on their Chromebooks, uh, maybe their iPads, uh, if they have just regular laptops, doesn't matter what they have, PDF is a nice universal format. It's automatically gonna create the share link for me, so I don't have to do that extra legwork. When it's finished creating the file, it's going to generate a QR code. So if students have the ability to scan the QR code, they can just go ahead and scan it with their device, and then it will take them uh, to the PDF version of all these notes. If they don't have the ability to scan the QR code, uh, there will be a short link at the bottom. So it's mvb.fyi uh, slash uh, letter or number combination, which you can see here, it's 4WOZ, uh, and that is case sensitive. So kids could also just write down the URL, or what most teachers do is they can just copy that URL paste it on their LMS like Google Classroom or Canvas, and then instantly kids have access to the notes. So just a quick recap. We don't use multiple apps. We don't need multiple tools. Everything is all in the MyViewBoard software. So go sign up for an account, sign into the MyViewBoard software. Magic Box is for importing from Drive and your document camera. Backgrounds are in the bottom left. And then the embedded browser is for all of your web-based content. When you wanna save and share it, use your folder. Now let's explore some other tools in the Viewboard OS. But before we do, don't forget to sign out or close the software when you're finished by choosing the X in the top right corner and then choosing Exit. The cool thing about this is I was just signed in with my Google Drive. When I exit the whiteboard software, it's like I was never here and it doesn't store any of my credentials, allowing me to go from device to device. Also remember the My Viewboard software can be downloaded on your laptop, such as your Windows device, your MacBook, your iPad, Chromebook. The purpose of that is we don't wanna to be tied to our board all the time. Maybe you wanna create away from the classroom so you can create your content, build your lessons in the My Viewboard software, and then open them directly on the board itself. Let's talk a little bit about Vcast. Vcast is your casting solution. So this allows you to wirelessly cast your laptop to the board. Uh, directions on how to use it are here. So you'll see it says tap here for first use. Just touch there and you'll see step one, step two on how to download the sender software. Once you have Vcast sender downloaded, you can then type in this pin code in order to wirelessly cast your device to the board. We have videos on how to use the Vcast receiver app 
uh, on our ViewSonic North America education page. The final thing we're gonna talk about are these little arrows that are on the side of the board. There's some really useful teaching tools in here. We call these the side toolbars. So when you select them, you'll see that this menu opens up on the side. You'll notice that there's a home button which replicates the home button on the front of the panel. Uh, there is this uh, whiteboard or the My View Board software, right, which accesses that. But if we go to these three dots at the bottom, you'll see that there's this snowflake icon on the top. This is actually the free screen, so you can actually lock your screen. Uh, but it's not just for locking. Uh, remember those zoom gestures I taught you earlier, right, where you spread your fingers apart? You can actually zoom in one finger to move on your screen. So if there's something really important that's hard for everybody to see, you can just freeze it and then zoom in to get closer. You'll also notice that there's this flashlight tool. This is the spotlight tool. So we can spotlight on items. There's a settings button if you wanna change the transparency of your spotlight. Touch the X to close it out. We also have a timer, so it looks like the clock with the bells on top. This allows you to set a specific amount of time, start it. If you touch anywhere, it'll actually hide it, so you can see it's down here at the bottom. And then you can drag and place your timer wherever you want to on the canvas. If you need to go back to your timer, just touch it. You can expand it with the arrows that are going away from each other if you need to make it full screen. And what's cool about this is that when the timer is finished, uh, it'll make a sound, but it actually will start counting up, right? So you kind of have a, a general idea of like how much past the timer uh, has the clock gone. If you wanna minimize it, touch the arrows, and then we can just close the timer with the X. So I hope you enjoyed this overview of the ViewBoard software. Uh, we have not covered everything in this overview, so be sure to head to uh, our ViewSonic Training Center website. Uh, this is a great place to get certifications as well as find additional resources, including our My ViewBoard knowledge base um, and all of our YouTube videos. Uh, we hope to see you on site soon and be able to talk to you more about uh, the wonderful workflow that is the ViewBoard uh, ecosystem.